Okay, what we have as we graph the sine and cosine function is, um, first of all, you need to realize that the sine is a ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse, whereas the cosine is the ratio between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. I actually have a video animation that I've linked right here that you can explore on your own, but we'll look at it together. As we look at this animation, uh, what we can see is it's going to show us a sine graph as the uh, angle changes. So you can see the angle, this angle marked in blue here in the middle of the screen, that's the value of theta, and it's going around from zero to two pi, and then it's going around a second time, which would be from two pi to four pi, two complete revolutions. Now, as I click this to do my sine animation, just click beside 14, you'll see it is marked in orange uh, the value of the opposite side. You can see the opposite side increases in length as you're going around the circle. It maxes out at one at the top. It decreases to zero. It drops down to a maximum value of negative one, and then it goes back around. And this pattern would complete forever. If I went another revolution, it would just complete the same pattern over and over. So this kind of explains the shape of the sine function, how it, rap it rapidly increases in size, slows down near the top, rapidly decreases, slows down again near the bottom, and then rapidly increases again. Uh, you can see the same thing with cosine, except for cosine is the distance from the axis. So you can see here at the beginning that it has a large distance from the axis, close to one, the orange line, the distance uh, from the uh, y-axis, the x value gets smaller, and then the x values get larger again, and so on. So you can see this cosine graph uh, going around that way. And maybe this animation helps you to see why the graph looks the way it does. Regardless of whether or not you understand why the graph uh, looks the way it does though, it is important to realize that a sine graph always starts at zero. So this starts at zero and a cosine graph always starts at one for your beginning value. Your amplitude for both of them is one your standard amplitude, your standard period for both of them is two pi. We usually do uh, talk about sine and cosine in terms of radians since it keeps our period smaller from like zero to two pi instead of all the way to 360 for a cycle. The midline by standard definition is just y equals zero, which is the x-axis. The domain of both of them you noticed on your graph was all real numbers. And then the range for both of them is from negative one to positive one. Because they both have a minimum at negative one and a maximum at positive one as their standard graph. The sine graph once again starts at zero. It goes up to one. It goes back down to zero, down to negative one, and back to zero. And that is your pattern of this graph. It's based on the y coordinates as you moved around those an that animation we saw. The cosine will start at 1. It'll go down to 0. Then it'll go down to negative 1. Then to 0. Then to positive 1. And it looks something about like that. So that gives you an idea of what these sine and cosine graphs look like. If you wanted to, you could always you know, add another cycle by continuing this way and just keeping that pattern up, the next thing negative one, then zero, then positive one, then zero. So you could continue that pattern further if you wanted. In either direction, you could keep it going for as far as you want. One other thing worth mentioning, the only difference between a sine and a cosine is that starting value. The cosine always starts at the origin at zero with a value of zero. The cosine will start uh, generally with positive one unless it's reflected by putting a negative in front and then it would go to negative one. But uh, the starting location is the only difference. It's the same um, zero, one, um, zero, negative one, zero pattern eventually for either one of them.